Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello, my dear students of Senior 2. I want to take this chance again to welcome you for another intensive 30 minute session of uh, TV learning. Uh, I am your teacher for physics today, and I want to begin by introduce my, introducing myself to those who may not be knowing me. Uh, I am teacher JB, and we are going to be learning together today a very interesting subject which is called physics, and I hope you are enjoying it. Now, today, we are going to be able to look at the last lesson for this unit, which is, which is unit number five. If you remember, we have spent quite some time on this unit number five. And so unit number five is about measuring liquid pressure using a what? A manometer. That's what we have been looking at all these days. And so today, as I told you, the last lesson that we are going to look at is, called, is about the hair's apparatus. Okay? The hair's apparatus and the spigmo manometer. It's kind of a big word. I'm sure most of you are listening to that word for the first time. Not that you have not seen it, I'm sure you have experienced it. Uh, you'll discover during the lesson where you might have experienced it. So we are looking at the hair's apparatus, we shall see what it is used for, and the spigmo manometer. Right. Our learning objectives today are going to be, one, I want you to be able to explain the use of a spigmo manometer. So after understanding what a spigmo manometer is, we should also know how to explain how it is used, spigmo manometer. Two, we should be able to understand the term blood pressure, okay? What is blood pressure? All of us have got blood in our bodies. So what is blood pressure? And uh, we should be able to state the normal blood pressure. Many of you have gone to the hospital and measured your bl blood pressure, but perhaps you do not know how to uh, state the normal, what the normal blood pressure is. And also, we should be able to explain the basic structure of the hair's apparatus and what it is used for. What is the hair's apparatus and how do we use it? And also, compare relative densities of two liquids when we are using the hair's apparatus. So, that is basically what our lesson is going to be today. Okay? And we also have a group of words that we should be able to discover during this lesson. Some of them are new, others maybe we have seen them, but we shall try to make them clearer. Uh, Spigmo manometer, blood pressure, high blood pressure, which is called hypertension, okay? When someone says they have high blood pressure, that is hypertension. Low blood pressure, which is hypotension. Then you have systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and relative density. So those are some of the new words that we are going to introduce today. Okay, let's get on with our lesson. Now, a spigma, a spigma manometer is a device that is used to measure the blood pressure, okay? You use this device to measure the blood pressure. I'm very sure you have seen some of, you have seen this gadget when you visit a hospital. Okay, just think about it. If you are having some problem and you go to the hospital, one of the first things that the doctors will do is to take your blood pressure. On top of taking your weight, they need to know how many kilograms you have and so many other things. But one of the things is they take your blood pressure. And this device which we use for taking the blood pressure is what is called a spigmo manometer, a kind of tongue twister. Right, now, the parts of a, a spigmo manometer, we have a cuff, you see, this one, which is an inflatable, you know, uh, material that they wrap around your, your arm, and then you have a bulb, which is full of, a, full of a gas, they release the gas, and the gas goes into the cuff, so that it can squeeze your arm and be able to take the blood pressure. Then there's also a rubber tubing. You are seeing this uh, rubber tubing, quite long. And this tubing is connected to a pressure gauge. Remember last time when you were looking at anemometer, I mean, aneroid barometer. You remember? 
aneroid barometer. We looked at a gadget like this. So that kind of barometer is also connected. It's part of the spigmo manometer. And what does it do? This is the gadget that measures uh, the blood pressure. Now, as you can see, this is analog. We are also going to see that with advancement in technology, instead of using this, which is analog, you know, with a pointer, we now have a digital uh, scale, a, dig a digital gadget that we can just read uh, the pressure on, 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 on the screen. Okay? So let's look at how a spigmo manometer basically works. And for this, we are going to have a small short video that I want us to observe as uh, I explain what happens in the video. Okay? Right. Let's play the video. So right in this video, as you can see, this is a spigmo manometer, which was connected to, tied around someone's hand. And inside here, there is blood, which is flowing in the blood vessel. So the, the, the force that is exerted by the blood in the vessel is what is called blood pressure. And so when they are measuring the blood pressure, you'll see that the blood pressure is greater in the arteries than in the veins. And the pressure changes. The pressure is not the same uh, when blood is flowing at all times. There's what we call systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. So here, the pressure in the artery during ventricular contraction, that means when those vessels contract, that pressure is what is referred to as what? Systolic pressure. When the, 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 the muscles, I mean, the blood vessels contract, we refer, refer to that as systolic pressure. And when it relaxes, that means becomes bigger a little bit, we refer to that as diastolic pressure. Remember, those were one of the key words that we said we should be able to understand. Okay? So, we said here, the pressure during relaxation of the, uh, of the muscles, sorry, of the blood vessels is referred to as diastolic pressure. The other one, when the, the, the blood vessels become very small, we call it systolic pressure. So I hope you are getting the difference between those two. Right, let's go ahead. And so when you are measuring the blood pressure, we then look at uh, the two kinds of pressures. We, there's a point where we have low pressure and also when we have high pressure. When the vessels contract, we have high pressure. When the vessels relax, then we have a very uh, uh, low pressure, okay? And so the normal blood pressure for an adult measured by a spigmo manometer is 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. That's how we, we read it, 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. And we are saying we read this as 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. Now, in our lessons before, if you remember, previously, we looked at how to convert uh, pressure from millimeters of mercury to Pascal or to Newtons per meter squared. If you do that, that normal pressure for an adult is going to be about 16,320 Pascal, which is the same as uh, 16,320 newton per meter squared, over 10,880 pascal. If you convert this pressure here into newtons per meter squared or to pascal. So we read it also as 16,000 over 10,000, using this as a value of G and using uh, the density of mercury as 13,600. Okay? So that is something that we, we, we realize. Now, if you go and measure your blood pressure, and the doctor tells you that your blood pressure is less than 90, okay? Less than 90, this figure on top, yours is less than 90, and down it is less than 60. So we say less than 90 over less than 60. Then you should know that you have low what? Low blood pressure, which is called hypotension. If you have 
120 over 80, remember it is normal blood pressure. If you have 120 to 129 over less than 80, then that is an elevated value. So it means it is not, not very normal. Again, uh, stage one high blood pressure, it means already you have high blood pressure from 130 to 139 over 80 to 89. And then uh, that data continues on and on. And so for hypertension, as I told you, hypertension, your blood pressure should be higher than 180 millimeters over higher than 120. And once that happens, please see a doctor. Now, if you continue with your biology lessons, you will find that uh, hypertension is not good, in as much as hypertension is also not good. But here I'm focusing on hypertension. So since it is not good, what do we do to reduce the effect of hypertension or actually not to even develop it at all? So these are four procedures that we can follow, how to avoid hypertension. Uh, one, you should eat healthy. Two, avoid alcohol. Three, do regular exercise, okay, most of the time. And then you need to check up uh, your body systems by visiting a doctor very regularly. So that is about uh, blood pressure. Let's go to the next item. The next one, as I told you, we are going to be looking at the hair's apparatus. So what does this apparatus do? The hair's apparatus is a device used to find the densities and relative densities of two different liquids. So if you want to find the density of two different liquids at the same time, or compare the relative densities, then we can use the hair's apparatus. And we are saying, in equilibrium, the pressure by water column is equal to the pressure by the oil column. Now, if you look at our apparatus here, this is like a white tube, okay? You see this one? It's like a white tube. And one end or one arm is dipped into water, the other one is dipped into oil. So we are using two liquids here, water and oil. And this is a, a syringe tube. I think you, you, you see it very well. Since we have been talking about doctors, so this is quite very easy for you to appreciate. Now, I also have an illustration here on the diagram, on the board, which is this. We have two liquids also. So, let me call this one liquid A, and let's call that liquid B. Because what I'm having in front of you here is not uh, water and oil. I'm having two different liquids. We don't need to know what those liquids are. We just want to be able to compare their densities and their relative densities. Okay, so this is my syringe tube. Inside here, we have got what? We have got air. And there's a plastic tubing that I'm going to show you, and then the rest will be seen. So let me speak to my fellow teachers in other schools. Sometimes we don't have the apparatus that is, you know, even recommended in the books, the textbooks that we have. Now, do we have to cross our fingers and say we can't do anything? No, we don't need to do that. You can improvise. Right here within my environment here in this lab, I didn't have the hair's apparatus. Does it stop me from explaining concept about the hair's apparatus? No. So this is the creativity that I did. I want you to invite yourselves and come around this side. Um, this is a rheostat, you know it very well, a stand and the base, sorry, not a rheostat. This is a, a retort stand, this is the stand and that is the base. The clamp is here. All these devices that, um, that you are seeing here, when you put them together, makes what we call the hair's apparatus. But we created, I created it locally here. I had my rubber tubing. This one I bought from a, a certain pharmacy. This, a same tube, very easy. You know where to get it. And these are beakers, which are quite very common. This is a capillary tube. These are rubber tubings, as you can, uh, I mean rubber bands, as you can see, these two. Okay? I just joined it to a rubber tubing. And this is uh, a structure that I just got locally around here. I'm using this to join to the wire tube. You see, 
This is the Y tube, okay? Because it is in the shape of letter Y. So this is a Y tube. And here I have liquid A according to our diagram. Then here we have liquid what? Liquid B. So basically, this is how I have constructed the hairs apparatus. I was speaking to my fellow teachers. Students, same arrangement that we have seen, okay? So once we have the hairs apparatus, how then do we use the hairs apparatus to compare densities of two, two different liquids? So this is what we are going to do. I hope you are going to observe this carefully. If you put the capillary tube in this liquid A, automatically the liquid will rise, okay, in this capillary tube. Why? Because atmospheric pressure is pushing down. So it rises. Even this, let me use a blue chalk, even this, the capillary tube will have a certain amount of liquid inside it because atmospheric pressure is pushing down. Okay? Let's look at what happens. What we are going to do now is that we are going to pull the piston of this syringe tube downwards. So let me pull right here, pull. We are going to pull it. So when we pull it, what do you think will happen? What will happen is that the volume of the air inside, you see? Volume of this air will increase. And the pressure inside here will also will decrease. When you increase the volume, then the pressure will go down. And when this pressure goes down here, the gas pressure or the air pressure inside here will be less than the atmospheric pressure. So what will then happen is the atmospheric pressure is going to push down here and the liquid will rise further into, into the tube. Does that make sense to you? That is the basic idea behind the hairs apparatus. Okay, so let's try to demonstrate it. As I told, it is a makeshift apparatus. I hope it will work. Okay, let's try to demonstrate it. This is my liquid B, and that is my liquid A. There's nothing you can see in the tube, and the good thing is the liquids are colored. So I am going to, you know, pull this piston down, just like we said there. This is a rubber tubing, which doesn't exist in that diagram, but it is here. So let me pull this down, okay, as you observe what happens. So when I pull this down, already you can see what is happening. Do you see what is happening? When you pull, do you see what is happening? Okay? This one is sucked inside, and this is also sucked inside. And so let me leave it there. Just focus, focus your attention on those two diagrams. So what next am I going to do? What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a meter rule. For you, you need to use a small ruler. Then I should measure this height. Do you see this height here? I should measure it, and I should also measure this height. For this liquid, you can see the level of uh, the liquid in the capillary tube is there. So what do I need to do? I need to measure those two distances. Of course, this is not the best meter rule that I, I can use, so I'm just going to use this to get an estimate, okay? Even when you begin measuring from here, remember, it is the same, uh, the same starting point. So on this side, I'm having about 27. I'm ignoring this height. So let me just record that as 27. So it means the height for B, you see, the B rises like this, okay? So B comes up to, I hope that is B. I measured from the other side, so it is B, yes. So B rises up to 27 centimeters. That is this distance here. But it is going up to the bottom, so there's no problem, okay? Because I'm assuming that the level of this is the same as the level of that. Okay, let's measure the other side. So if I measure this, Again, remember this is not the best uh, uh, measuring device we can use. You can use a smaller ruler, but for me, let me use this just for demonstration. The assumption is that the level of this uh, uh, liquid A is the same as that of B. 
Okay, so I'm going to measure this also, just an estimate. This is giving me about 24.5, about 24. Okay, let us take 24. So, let's record it here. This height, it rises to 24. Let me use the right color. So, rises up to here, 24. As you can see, this height is more than this. This is smaller, so this is 24. So, it means right from there up to here, this is 24 centimeters. Remember, this is 27, from there up to there. Now, what we are interested in is this height here. Because we are assuming that these levels are the same, because I put the same amount of liquid, assume that this is 20 centimeters, from here up to there is 20 centimeters. If this is 20, then here we shall remain with 4 centimeters, okay? And if this is also 20 centimeters, what does it mean? This balance here is going to be equal to how many centimeters? Seven centimeters. So do you see how we get the two heights now? And so if we want then to determine the relative density, we shall then say, very important, follow, follow me here, the pressure exerted by this column of mercury is the same as the pressure exerted by the other column of mercury. Why? Because the air pressure here is the same. So, pressure due to this, let me record it in, 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 in red, that pressure is going to be equal to rho GH. But this rho is density of liquid A. G is constant. Then H is the height of A. This should be equal to, I'm going to change the color also, to uh, blue. Okay. This is going to be rho, but this is for B, then G, then times H, which is for B. Now, G is on either side. So we can cross this with that, okay? Because they are common. So we remain with it. density of A times height of A is equal to density of B times height of what? Height of B. Now, if we are sure that one of this is water, just imagine A was water. So if A is water, it means this now becomes density of what? Of water. And relative density, remember, is density of substance divided by density of water. So now we shall have density of B divided by density of A. If I take this the other side, it means I divide this by density of A. I also divide this by density of A. This is what I have here. So I take height of B on the other side. So I will have height of A divided by height of B. And so this is a very important equation that we get from Hare's apparatus, where density of B over density of A. Remember, we have now baptized A, okay? We have baptized A what? Water. So it means this is the density of liquid B divided by density of water. So this becomes relative density of B is equal to height H, I mean A, over height of B. So if I want, I can then say relative density of B is going to be equal to H A over H B. And what is our H A? We have already discovered it here. Uh, it is a 4, okay? So this becomes 4 out of 7. This is centimeters, and that is centimeters. And automatically, you can simplify this and get relative density uh, of what? Of B. So that is how we use the Hare's apparatus to discover density of an object once we know the density of a liquid called water. Isn't that quite interesting? That is the Hare's apparatus. Okay? Good. So think about it. What new words, as we summarize this lesson, what new words have we learned today? The new words we have learned, we have high blood pressure, we have low blood pressure, we have a spigmomanometer. It's a tongue twister, okay? Spigmomanometer. Can you say it? Spigmomanometer. Uh, can you try to say that word? Spigmomanometer. So it's kind of, kind of hard. But we have seen 
It is used for measuring the blood pressure. If you go to the hospital, you'll find it there. We have also been able to see diastolic blood pressure. Remember, it is a blood pressure when the heart does what? Relaxes. Uh, we have also been able to see relative density as a ratio of density of substance to density of what? Of water. We use the hair's apparatus also to find relative density of B. And also, we have been able to see systolic blood pressure. And systolic blood pressure is the blood pressure when the heart does what? Contracts, when the heart becomes smaller. Right. So that is what we have. So as we, as we end our lesson today, I want you to remember the following. Blood pressure, which is the pressure exerted by your blood on the walls of the blood vessels. That is what we call blood pressure. Normal blood pressure, we looked at its value, 120 millimeters of mercury over 80 millimeters of mercury. That is normal blood pressure. So when you go to the hospital and the, the nurse or the doctor tells you the blood pressure, even before he tells you, now you know what normal blood pressure is. We converted also that into millimeters, I mean into pascals and newtons per meter squared. Okay, you should also know low blood pressure, what it means, high blood pressure. Remember, low blood pressure is hypotension. High blood pressure is hypertension. And also, you know uh, what to do in order not to develop high blood pressure, which is hypertension. And also, we looked at this, the hair's apparatus. And what is its use again? It is used to compare relative densities of two liquids. You can also use it to get the relative density of a liquid just by getting these heights here. And these are the calculations that we had. So basically, that's what we wanted to do during this lesson. My prayers and my hope and my wishes are that you followed it well, you have been taking the notes, and so you have increased in knowledge as of today. Right. I'm going to leave you with this assignment. Okay? Quite very easy. A nurse... Okay? A nurse administers medication. So a nurse gives medicine of, I mean, in a saline sol solution to a patient by infusion. Okay? They inject into your blood vessels. I don't like injections, by the way. But when I'm sick, I, I, have, to, I have to be injected. By infusion into a vein in the patient's arm. The density of the solution, this saline solution, is 1.0 times 10 to power 3 kilograms per meters cubed. And the gauge pressure inside the vein is 2.5 times 10 to the power 3 pascals. So how high above the insertion point must the container uh, be hung so that there is enough pressure to make the fluid you know, flow into the patient's blood? This one. So calculate the height H. I want to believe that you are able to do that. So once again, thank you so much, my wonderful students, for being attentive, taking notes, and I hope you have been understanding the concept. Thank you for being with me and with us today. Join me again another time for the next lesson. Thank you, and bye-bye.